being here with us as we are celebrating joy. Are you feeling joy in the room? Do you feel the presence of joy in the room? This is what God has for us. This is our portion. How many know that? Joy is our portion. That is our portion. The enemy wants to, for us to live defeated. But joy is our portion. I'm so happy to be here this morning. Um, I'm excited about the word God has for us. Um, so let's just get straight into it. Are y'all ready for the word? I'm ready for the word on today. Lord, bless your word. Bless your people. In Jesus' name, amen. So I'm going to start off with um, just a, blank, a blanket statement. You can tell me or not if you believe this is true. Um, I believe that human beings are dramatic. Does anybody believe, does anybody have that, like, we're just kind of dramatic people. Does anybody uh, else agree with that? Somebody else might be in here like, well, I'm not a dramatic person. That's not me. I don't know what you're talking about. Um, I believe that they're dramatic, and I'm going to tell you why. If human beings aren't dramatic, then explain wrapping paper to me. <laughs> explain wrapping paper. I want to know, because if we weren't dramatic, we would just give people gifts in the holidays. We're like, here, here's your gift. Just got it straight from the store, handed it to you, right? But no, we're, we're dramatic. We put them in all kind of wraps and gift bags with millions of tissue. Some of y'all are evil. You get little gifts and put them in big boxes and make people dig and unwrap and unwrap anybody like that you just make them go through the agony of it all dramatic we are dramatic people you know we are familiar with this concept of what we would call this drama this suspense we would call it anticipation right we're familiar with this anticipation you know this anticipation is when you were little and your family put up a tree and not only did they put up a tree they would put a gift with your name on it, like two weeks before Christmas. All kind of, anybody have people like that in your life? You, you're, there's like five gifts under the tree with your name, all kind of shapes, boxes, big, tall, and what did you do? Shake it, trying to guess. How many of y'all ripped it on accident? Whoops, right? How many, <laughs> it wasn't an accident. You know, we, we did little things. Then you have to act surprised on Christmas morning. Like, oh, I didn't even know it was a train set. Y'all remember that? So that whole anticipation, that, that buildup is what we're talking about today. The title of our sermon today is Joyful Anticipation. Joyful Anticipation. Those two words don't always go together. Joyful Anticipation. Um, we, that same anticipation we have for gifts is the same um, feeling that we could bring into the Advent season, right? Remember, this is our third week of Advent. And this is the, Advent is the time that we celebrate the complete culmination of the suspense of the universe. Y'all, you gotta, you gotta get the big picture. We gotta zoom out all the way. The suspense of the universe, everything hinged on this moment. Well, well the, the, the the fate of mankind hinged on this one operation. If Jesus can come to earth, if Jesus can fulfill the mission, and it would save mankind from sin. We are lost in doom. It's the one, it's the one and done. We only got one. It's like you got one bullet and that's it, right? This was a one and done mission. Everything hinged on Jesus doing it right, to set right the universe, the whole, all of heaven. I want you to imagine just hanging over and what, will this work? All of mankind is like, will this work? We, we are expecting a savior. The Jewish people, we're expecting a savior, someone to come save us. 400 years of silence, millions of thousands of prophecies, and it all culminates to this one moment when Jesus is born. The anticipation, right? Can you feel the suspense? It's like the best thriller movie you've ever seen. So our theme today was joy. But joy can be tricky. Anybody agree with me? Joy a little tricky. Joy is something apparently that can be stolen because we always say, I ain't gonna let you steal my joy today, right? I ain't gonna let the devil take my joy. So apparently this joy thing is a little, 
You could either have it or not. People could take it or you could give it away. It's something that's a little tricky. Um, joy is different than happiness, right? Happiness is, we've all heard this before, happiness is based on happenings. Things happen for you, you're happy about it. Things don't happen for you, you, you know, you're a little salty, right? Joy is a little different. It's eternal. It's internal. It's what uh, we were just talking about, what Aaliyah just said, a joy that's deep down in your soul. I would even dare to say that it is supernatural because it's something that you necessarily can't conjure up. This joy. Joy is a little different. Um, so Advent, we're all about sitting in the tension of joyful anticipation. This is the problem. Time, when time and unmet expectations meet, it also, all, almost always results in disappointment. Y'all hear the formula? Math, people? Here. Time, times, what is it? Divided by doing the calculus. Okay, sorry. <laughs> she gets mad when I pick on a, on a math teacher. Time plus unmet expectations often result in disappointment. Have you ever been there before? Feels agonizing when you're waiting in the anticipation. I have an image in my mind. This is where I feel I should be, but it, it's, not, it's not matching up. This is, what, this is where we land, smack dab in the middle of our lectionary passage today. Our passage is Matthew 11, and it's very interesting. Matthew 11, two through six. Very interesting passage that we land in. Starting at verse two, it says, now when John heard in prison about the deeds of the Christ, he sent word by his disciples and said to him, are you the one who is to come or shall we look for another? And Jesus answered them, go and tell John what you hear and see. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear, and the dead are raised up, and the poor have good news preached to them. And blessed is the one who is not offended by me. Ooh, that's a cold piece of scripture right there. Thank you for coming. No, just kidding. First of all, let's just look at the scripture. John is locked up. Won't let me out. He is the foreman. And it's, this is very interesting because John is the promised one. He is the one who was the forerunner to Jesus. He was the one that paved the way. He was born of Elizabeth. He's a miraculous child. He was in the wilderness preaching. John was famous. John had people following him. He was baptizing. He was setting people straight. John did everything right. John lived according to his purpose, and here in this passage, we see John in jail. John is in jail, and he's done everything correct until this point. He's lived into his calling in his life, and he's in jail not because he stole some Jerusalem sandals from somebody. He is in jail because he spoke truth to power. He told Herod about his business, like, hey, it ain't right for you to be with this woman. And he put his business out in the street, and they was like, you know what? We're going to lock you up for telling the truth. He's in jail for doing the right thing. So that's very peculiar that this is how it all sets up. John is sitting in jail, and, you know, when you're in jail, you got time to think. John's sitting there thinking, like, okay, I got questions. John had questions. John had great anticipation about Jesus. Remember, John is the one who baptized Jesus. And when he baptized Jesus, he was like, this is it, y'all. He's the one. It ain't me. It's him. I know y'all thought I was the Messiah. It's him. He the one. Let's go. Get on his team, right? John hyped, John hyped Jesus up. I'm going to prove it to you in uh, Matthew 3. In the message version, we love the message. The message version, look, well, look what John's sermon about Jesus John said, I'm baptizing you here in the river, turning your old life, turn in, turning your old life in for a kingdom life. The real action comes when the main character in this drama, compared to him, I am a mere stagehand. 
will ignite kingdom life within you, a fire within you, the Holy Spirit within you, changing you from the inside out. He's telling them this is what Jesus is about to do. He's going to clean house. He's going to make a clean sweep of your life. He'll place everything in its true and proper place before God. Everything false he will put out in the trash to be burned. This was John's sermon about Jesus. Ooh, he gonna get y'all. That's what that was essentially the sermon. Y'all about to get it. When he come, oh, he's setting everything right. All your little trash in your life is gonna be out. It's gonna be burned. Y'all ready for this? The Messiah is coming. Y'all ready? Prepare ye the way. All right. Y'all ready? He coming. And then John's sitting in jail. Like, wait, hold on now. All these things that I preached, all this anticipation of what, and I, all I'm hearing is Jesus is like making fish sandwiches. He's healing people, random people. He's eating at sinners' houses. What is going on here? He, didn't Jesus, remember you were supposed to come and sweep the house. Remember that? Remember that sermon, Jesus? Remember you, the Messiah? Like, where's the Roman, you know, the, the Roman overthrow? Where's the horses? Where's the chariot? Like, let's get with it. Like, we ready to, let's go. Do you want a revolution? This is what John was anticipating. But he was dealing with unmet expectations. And I feel John. I've been there. John is me and I am John. Have you ever been there where you are sitting in unmet expectations, not from people, but towards God. That's a whole nother level. It's going to get real quiet in here, but it's okay. I brought my own amen. It's in my back pocket. When, when let's be real. It's a to be honest moment. Not, not for people. When I'm, I'm looking dead at you, God, and like, what is this? I've done everything right. I don't know why am I locked up in this situation. I thought you was going to come through. I thought you was going to Get revenge for me. I thought you was going to bunch them in their mouth. Like, you see what they did to me? Anybody been in a situation where you have unmet expectations? Jesus did not do anything John expected him to. Not a one. Jesus had his own agenda. He didn't do nothing on John's list. Jesus didn't do nothing. So Jesus was, John was sitting there like, I'm, I just have questions. In verse 3, First question John has, are you the one who's to come or should I look for somebody else? Cause, cause just, cause, cause I don't, I don't what, are we, what are we doing here, Jesus? Are you, now listen, the one who baptized and declared, this the one, backtracked and said like, hold on now. Now, come here, G. Are, are you, the, are you really the one? Because, or are, are we supposed to look for somebody else? Cause you out here playing. I don't understand what you're doing. Have you? ever been there I've lived this verse a million times God is this thing for real like what did I, what did I sign up for in this Christianity thing is this the right thing or should I be a Buddhist I don't know what to do at this point like what am I doing what is this about why is this taking so long what is going on anybody been there come on here we we've all been John are you the one should I look for another God are you real I know my grandma said you was real my auntie, my dad, all of them, the preachers and them. But is this, is this right? Is this real? What he couldn't see, John and all the other Jewish people, God was actually answering their prayers, and they couldn't see it. Come on, you got you to gotta walk through this with me. He was answering their prayers, and they couldn't even see it. Come on, God, open our eyes today. They were waiting for the Messiah, the anointed one, the Mashiach right? The one who comes to save, to deliver. Thousands of prophecy. They've been waiting for this moment. They read prophecies of how the Messiah would come and overthrow God's enemies and, and that they stood, they understood this to mean that he would deliver them from their Roman masters. Remember, they were under Roman oppression, a lot like the oppression we have felt as people of color. Under Roman masters, they expected him to set up an earthly kingdom, a kingdom that, that they would be the rulers of, not be ruled. They overlooked the Messiah's role as their deliverer from sin and Satan. 
They missed, the, they missed the assignment. They didn't understand that his kingdom was spiritual, not political. As a result, few were prepared to accept Jesus as the promised Messiah. Why? Because he did not fit into their idea of what a Messiah should be. That's a crazy state. They actually missed Jesus because of unmet expectations. You got to get this today. You got to get how this applies to our life. What was Jesus' answer to John? John out here talking sideways in prison. He was out here, um, you know, on Instagram when you're talking all crazy because nobody can, you can't really get to him. John was talking real reckless in prison. And John, Jesus says to John, hey, this is what I want you to do. Go tell John. Go back to John. This is what I want you to tell him. Don't tell him that. Don't worry about it. Tell John what you hear and what you see. What did he say? The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised up, and the poor have the good news preached to them. That's Jesus' answers. I love Jesus' answers. They're never like really straightforward. You got to figure them out. You got to sit with them for a minute like, okay, what that mean? Um, so when Jesus gave this answer, this is where it's going to help us today. How can I, how can we find joyful anticipation in moments of confinement, moments where we feel stuck, moments when we feel like we're emotionally incarcerated, moments of mental arrest, moments when your heart feels locked up. Did I hit anybody, any, any of those, anybody been there? Y'all mighty quiet today, y'all all right? Just checking on y'all. How, do, how, do, how, can we, how can we bring the two together? What does this have to do, Jesus? Your answer is a little, um, uh, we don't understand it. What do you mean, Jesus? Well, maybe this will help us with our anticipation. Maybe the answers to your prayers are not always what you think they're going to look like. Can I say that again? Maybe your answers to your prayers may not look the way you thought it would. Y'all with me? Maybe the better prayer, maybe the better thought is, Lord, what are you trying to teach me in this moment? What are you trying to teach me in this moment? What really matters right now? Because I was praying for my bank account to, to blow, the, you know, the increase. But you, you want me to receive my spiritual sight. You want to open my eyes to some things. You want to show me how to budget. You want to show me how to not overspend my credit card. You want to, maybe you teaching me different things. God, I thought I needed a boo, but you, maybe you trying to help me not to be lame. Maybe you trying to help me to walk on my own, stand on my own emotional two feet. Maybe you want me to get therapy. Maybe you want me to seek help right now. Maybe God's trying to get us to walk on our own two feet. Maybe you thought you needed a new job, but he's like, I'm trying to cleanse you from sin. I'm trying to cleanse the leprosy in your heart and in your mind. Maybe God is doing a new thing. Maybe God is wanting to do something other than you thought. Maybe you thought you needed a new car, but he's like, I'm unstopping your ears so that you can hear me clear, so you can get direction, so that you can go, and, uh, go on your way and you can hear clear words from me. Maybe... You thought your dreams were dead, but God's like, I am wanting to raise the dead things up in your life. Maybe I am the resurrection. Maybe you need some, there's some old projects that you put down. There's some old people that you need to call. Maybe there's some sorries that need to happen. Maybe there's some people who are poor in their spirit, and I want to use you to bring good news to them. This is the work of Messiah. This was the work of Messiah. They were looking for over here, but Jesus was like, but I'm doing all the, can you please go tell John I'm doing all the things? Go, go tell him I'm doing all the things. And if, if I had time, we would walk back to Isaiah and we would see the original scripture where this was said, this was prophesied of the Messiah. These are all the things that they were going to do. They forgot that. They were like, we want horses and chariots. Where y'all at? Right? The main takeaway I want you to get from this is that it is important how you wait. It's important how you wait. How you wait is so important. My favorite scripture of this whole thing is um, verse 6, and I don't know if he could put it on the screen. 
verse 6, Matthew eleven six. 6, my favorite scripture of this whole passage. Jesus hit him with a, with a, with a one-two punch. This was the knockout punch right here. He said, and let John know, blessed is the one who is not offended by me. Come on, just sit in that for a minute. Jesus said, blessed is the one. We want blessed is the one who get a check. Blessed is the one that get, no, no, no. Jesus like, okay, did it. This one you blessed. When you're not offended by me. Ah, offense, annoyance, or resentment brought by a perceived insult or to disregard or disregard for oneself or one's standards or principles. I am annoyed. I'm resentful because what I thought was going to happen didn't happen. Offense. How many times have we been offended because God didn't do what we wanted God to do? I know this is tough. It's going to get joy. It's supposed to be joy. We're going to get joy. We're going to get joy in a minute. But we got we to gotta clean out the, the wound before we can go into, or into the healing. How many times have we been offended by God? God, you didn't do it like I, I gave you my outline of my life. What happened? I gave you my four-point plan. What have, where's my, here's my business plan, Lord. What, what's, what's going on? Yeah, yeah. Jesus said, blessed is the one who is not offended by me. Saints of the most high God. We can't be offended by God's ways. They miss Jesus because they didn't like the way he came. He didn't come like they expected it. They was waiting for a big uh, military uh, strength. He came as a baby. They thought he was going to be in a palace. He came to the hood, a shady neighborhood in Nazareth. They thought he was going to be hanging out with the Sadducees and the Pharisees and the high priests. He hanging out with sinners and prostitutes and undesirables. He thought, you know, you should be talking with the rabbis. He out here talking to women. You, you know, he, he, we thought he was going to be healing, you know, heal us, heal our nation. He healing people on the wrong day. Why you keep, if you read through the gospel, he just kept healing people on the Sabbath. He was just doing it on purpose at this point. Like, oh, what day is it? Oh, yeah, you be healed. He was just messing with him at this point. Like, Jesus, stop healing people on Sabbath. He's like, no, I'll do what I want. I'm the Lord of the Sabbath. Right? So. As you wait and anticipate God's answers to your prayer, my question is, what is your posture? So we get into joy. What is your posture? While you're waiting, how many people are waiting for God on something? You got a prayer request. It's pending. It's like the wheel is turning. You're like, you keep hitting reset, and it's just keep pending. Like, Lord, when is it going to answer? You waiting for that download to come? It's still in a circle. It's a pinwheel, right? We're waiting on something. How you wait? And what is your posture? Will you be offended that God's not doing it your way? Are you, or, or are we going to have temper tantrums because God's not doing it our way? Or... We can choose joyful anticipation. Come on, somebody say joyful anticipation. Y'all know what joyful anticipation is. This is the thing that we experienced as a kid. When you had your present and you knew it was your present, it had your name on it. You, you just knew it was for you. So you didn't have to worry, am I getting to give you? Like, I got to give it, got my name on it. I just got to wait for when, right? That joyful anticipation. This is why David said, Lord, teach me your ways. Come on, sit in that for a minute. Lord, teach me your ways. Teach me your way. Teach me your way. God, I want to learn to do things your ways because your ways are not like my ways. Remember in Isaiah says, for my thoughts are not your thoughts. This is God speaking. Neither are my ways your ways, declares the Lord. For the heavens, as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than yours, and my thoughts are higher than yours. We're not smarter than God. We can't figure it all out sometimes. God's ways are different. We want God's ways to conform to our ways. God's like, I ain't doing it your way. I need you to conform to my way. Because I'm sovereign. I know, I know I could calculate it all. I got it all figured out. I need you to get on my program. I'm not getting on your program. Amen. We're taking on that same posture as a child. That's why God wants us to have childlike faith. God's got a blessing 
with my name on it. That's our, that's, that's our, that's our mantra. That's our anthem. I, I might not see it now. I'm still waiting on it. But I can trust that God has something for me. That God has my life under control. That God knows my times. That God knows exactly what I need. I'm just going to wait like a kid at Christmas in joyful anticipation. God, I know it's coming. I know it's coming. I'm changing my posture. I'm not going to sit around being, they didn't give me nothing this year. No, we're not going to be offended. We're going to be joyful. I know it's coming. I know it's coming. So our prayer should be, Lord, whatever you want, however you want to do it, whoever you want to use, however you want to show up, I trust you. Come on, that's a, powerful, that's a powerful prayer. God, however you want to do it. Come on, think about the thing you just said you're waiting on. That thing that's pending. Can you release control of how it's supposed to be done and say, God, here, I'm giving however you want to do it. It's yours. However you want to do it. Joyful anticipation should be rooted in trust. This is what joyful anticipation is about. Surrendering to God's will and timing. I'm going to say it again. Surrendering to God's will and timing. When he does it and how he does it is God's business. That's a whole, that's a whole sermon by itself. God, that's on you. I ain't got to worry about it. I don't got to stay up at night. I don't got to figure it out. God, but why are you trying to figure it out? God already worked it out. Come on, that's what God wants to do. That's God's job. Our job is to trust that God will do what God said. Never limit God to just one option. Always be open. Somebody say, be open. Stop thinking that just the way you want to do it is the way it's going to be done. God will blow your mind. God will wreck you. God will blow your mind. God will do it in a way you never even imagined. That's what happened when he came as Messiah. They didn't even know that he was going to come as a baby. Who would have thought a baby? It was crazy, right? So sometimes we're looking at the door. When it's coming, God coming out the window. You looking out the window, God going to come. We don't know how God's going to do it, but we're going to live in expectation. So here's some re reflection questions I just have for the rest of the week. You could just sit and think on it. As you're thinking, and then when I, if I see you on Thursday, I want you to be like, ooh, church was good. What we talk about? I want you to remember these things as we are in Advent. How can you reimagine the Messiah's work in your life? How can you reimagine it? You think God come in one way. You think God's supposed to operate in one way. God could do exceedingly and abundantly above all that you can even ask or think. Do you need to reimagine your role as Messiah, as the one who's going to save you, as your deliverer? Do you need to reimagine that God can do whatever God wants to do? Number two, how can you be open and not offended by God's ways? We gotta let God operate however God wants to operate. Stop trying to control God. <laughs> God, God, only do it this way because this is the way I want it to be done. We're going to let God do whatever God wants to do, however God wants to do it. Third thing, what facts about God can help you lean into joyful anticipation for the things you're currently praying about? I want you to think about this. We can stand on this. I want you to think about this. What facts do you know about God? Come on here. The Holy Spirit that can help you lean into joyful anticipation. How you wait matters. So if you are waiting all mad and uptight, that's going to be a that's that's going to be a horrible wait. But what do you know about God? We just said it this morning. What you know about Jesus? Come on. What do you know about that that will help you lean into joy? I know God always has my back. I know God is always faithful. God always come through. God has not let me down. I'm still alive. I'm still breathing. I'm still in a test. I, I'm a living testimony. These are the things I know about God. So that makes me wait with joy. God did it before. What? God's going to what? Do it again. We do, God's doing it now. 
God will never, ever go back on God's word. So this is how we can lean into a season of joyful anticipation. Are y'all going to wait and joy? Are you going to wait and joy with me? Are you going to anticipate that God's going to do an amazing thing in your life? Are you going to get rid of the negative and offensive thinking that the enemy wants to rewind in your mind over and over again? Let's lean into what God has. Let's just close in a word of prayer. Just go ahead and bow your heads and close your eyes. Lord, we need you. God, even in the season of Advent, we are anticipating. We are sitting in the tension of the moment that you arrived in the earth to free us from sin and death and to give us life and that more abundantly. But Father, even as we are sitting in difficult situations as John did, he was doing the right thing but sitting in a difficult situation. Will you help us to lean into a posture of joyful anticipation of what you are going to do in our lives? God, I pray this prayer over this congregation. Father, just as you sent John the Baptist to prepare the way for Jesus, help me to clear the path in my heart too. Show me the distractions in my life that block me from all out worshiping you this Advent season. Lord, I await your coming. As I celebrate the first Advent, the first coming, I look forward to the day where I will see you face to face. I imagine what it will look like. Give me a heart, Lord, that looks for your coming on a daily, ongoing basis. Help me to live my life where I'm consistently seeking your presence. My offering to you today is my righteous life that I know that I could live only through you. God, show me today how I need to be refined, purified, forgiven. Give me the strength to ask for forgiveness and then to change my ways. God, this is the prayer. I pray over our congregation. Lord, that you would do a new thing in our heart. That you would do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we can ask or think. Lord, we love you today. Lord, uh, we just want to open the, our platform for anyone who wants to make a decision to follow Jesus today. You've heard all the wonderful things and the benefits about Jesus. If you would like to make a decision to follow Jesus today, I want my journey to begin today. Would you just raise your hand in the air? We're all just look. We're all, yes, so I see you, I see you, I see you. I am making a choice to follow Jesus. If that's you and you had your hand raised, could you just repeat this prayer after me? Lord Jesus, I need you. Thank you for dying for me. Thank you for rising again. Lord, I want to follow you for the rest of my days. Teach me. Lord, help me to grow and mature in you. I thank you so much for this new start. In Jesus' name, amen.